Hello and welcome to sound painting lesson number five. And this will be the last lesson uh, where I'm dealing with level one gestures, um, both in uh, mainly in music, but also uh, some in, in dance and theater. Something I forgot earlier on in lesson one um, was that you saw pitch up and pitch down. And it was quite clear probably to a lot of musicians that the, you know, the pitch of the sound was going up or it was going down. But in what interval are you choosing to go up or to go down? So that's the question. And it is that you choose either for the performer, the performer when given pitch up, or pitch down, chooses to go up a whole step or a half step, it's your choice as a performer, or the performer chooses to go down a whole step or a half step, that, that's your choice. When it comes to working with uh, actors, and maybe that some people might not understand whole step or a half step, then you as the sound painter or possibly asking a musician, if you the sound painter, if you don't have experience as a musician, ask somebody in the group to explain that it goes up just a little bit higher, you know. Uh, it's easy enough to understand. And you saw that I was doing combinations like this. In other words, this side of the room, maybe that's group two. You don't have to identify it that way. And this side of the room is, you know, one side was going up, one side was going down. And also another thing just to point out in the, in the, the, Oh, I forget which lesson it was, whether it was lesson one or lesson two. I'm not, I can't remember. But um, you saw me say this stage left, stage right. Well, this is a camera, so things are reversed. So it really was my left and my right. <laughs> um, anyway, forget that. So what are we dealing with in lesson five? Well, lesson five, we're seeing watch me. You've seen that a few times. That just means to get ready for something. That's all. It doesn't mean like you've been bad, so please watch me. We also deal with standing and sitting. Now, standing is a content. So if the sound painter doesn't you know, say something like whole group, stand, tempo, slow, and then gives a play gesture or slowly enter, then how you stand, the tempo that it, you know, the time it takes you to stand up, is up to you, but it should be within, you know, a couple of seconds, two or three seconds. But how you stand up, that's up to you. It could be with an aggression, it could be with some sort of character. But at the end of it, you're standing and you're neutral. The same thing with seating. You know, whole group sit and then play and you sit how you want. You go down to the chair, back to your original position, the defaulted sitting in neutral position. You go back to that position. But how you get there and see when you're going to sit down without a how gesture, well, then it's up to you. As I've been saying all along in these lessons that, you know, if there's no how gesture, then you choose how with the dynamics, the tempo, or the character, if you're an actor or a dancer, etc. Uh, there's also, you see, sit badly. Now everybody sits badly, you know, after giving a play gesture, everybody sits badly. You know, so this is badly. So it can be used a lot of different ways, you know. Now, the opposite of badly, even though it's not the proper English word, but, get, but it was named this by a young girl, a uh, little girl. She was maybe 10 years old, years ago, when I was teaching in upstate New York in, in a school in Socrates, New York. And I asked, I did, you know, to the whole class, the whole group, 10-year-olds, sit badly, and no problem, they sat badly. And then I said, the whole group, sit. And then before I gave a play gesture, I said, now, what do you think this means? And a little girl said, goodly. So <laughs> I decided to leave that as the name of the gesture. So this is goodly. Not quite the proper English word, but in sound painting, it's proper. Goodly. Badly, goodly. If, for example, moving on, You'll see this in, in the, when we go to the orchestra performing the gestures. If somebody is, say the whole group is speaking, right? Whole group speak, play. And uh, remember, you just speak about different things. You don't, you don't try to be narrative. You don't tell a story. You just use words, you know, 
Venetian blinds, outside, outside, Venetian blinds, outside, it's yellow, it's, you know. You don't try to tell a story, even though there might be some form of story in your short phrase that you're saying. So, again, back to what I'm getting at. We have the whole group speaking, play. Now the whole group speaking, and now you go whole group, stand up. Now this is a common error that a lot of people do, you know, a lot of performers do. They're speaking, and of course when you give stand up, play, they continue speaking and stand up. Now, that's just because it's a normal thing that we do, that we speak and we stand up sometimes, you know. Um, but that's not what it is in sound painting. Standing is a brand new content. So you say whole group speak, play, whole group stand up, play. They stop speaking on the play gesture and then stand up. And of course, without any how gesture, they stand up as they wish. If you want them to continue speaking, there's a few ways to do that, but I'm going to make, give you the simplest way at this point. So you say whole group speaking, speak, I'm sorry, whole group speak, play, and now you say continue with this, the material that's going on. Continue with this, the speaking you have just signed. Stand up. And they give a play gesture. So again, whole group speak. They're seated now. This is from the beginning, whole group speak, play. Whole group continue with this, sorry. Whole group continue with this, the speaking, stand up. So obvious, really. And then when to do it, okay, slowly enter. Now, if you say whole group sit and give a play gesture, they're not going to continue speaking. They're going to stop speaking and sit down. You would again have to say continue with this. Sit down. <laughs> Without the whistle. And then when they sit down, when they sit down, they continue speaking. The seating doesn't stop them from speaking. They continue speaking. Okay, so that's, that's that. Continue with this is quite interesting. Uh, there's more to be said about that when I move on to the next level of gestures in our lessons 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, whatever it winds up being. Um, okay, uh, another one you'll see in here is uh, freeze. So it's stab freeze, st 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 stab freeze, and the opposite of that is freezing. So the moment that the sound painter is showing this, I'll stand up. The sound painter is showing at an angle, stepping into the box, and then doing a freeze gesture. It's, at, it's opposite. This is stab freeze. This is freeze. 45 degree angle. Show the group the top of your hand. And the moment that you make that, you, you a musician, goes into a long tone. You, an actor, the actors go into a long tone. The dancers, or anybody moving, Goes, if you know, if the, if the dancer is doing a long tone, now imagine somebody is signing freeze. Then I freeze. So freeze, I let go, they go back to moving or to performing, uh, using sound. So the same with stab freeze. And st 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 stab freeze, they go back all the time. And just like in stab freeze, when you do that, they naturally get stuck, and by giving the continue on the vertical plane, which is which is better because then you, if you turn your hands to make the continue on the horizontal plane, you might lose the group. They think the staff freeze is broken. The same with freeze. So when you make the, the continue gesture, make it on the vertical plane. It's uh, still the same gesture. Okay, <clears throat> and then I think the last one that we're going to see is, imagine I'm going, 
uh, I'm singing a long tone. Oh, um. So that's mouth open closed. And you could do it out at the side, but you could also do it right in front of your mouth like this. So that's all that means. I mean, you could say whole group speak, you know. Oh, no, no, no. Right, 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 right. Sure, sure. <laughs> I no 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 I mean I I mean there's got to be something but I but 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 I know I I I I I so there's there's lots of things you can do with mouth open closed lots of things you can do with freeze lots of thing lots of stuff lots of possibilities with all the gestures I'm gonna speak more about that after we. Uh, get back to uh, first we're going to go to the next the section where you see the performers so you can see some of these things going on um, and then I'll see you at the end of this section see you then So we're going to wrap it up for the, this is the end of the, the series, Lessons 1 through 5. And um, I guess the first thing I want to just sort of reiterate is, uh, 
sound painting is sure it's it's a multidisciplinary live composing sign language but ultimately it's a tool you know you, you use it you use these gestures and phrases um, to create composition in the moment uh, with any discipline with a single discipline or multiple disciplines that's up to you that's up to your interest as a composer in real time as I was suggesting before, the, the way to begin is to begin more making collage form composition. Try not to tell a linear story. Tell a more, you know, block story. A little this, a little that, a little this, a little that. Um, and see if that doesn't help you uh, understand how to compose in real time. And because that's what, that's what it is. You're composing in real time. And if you try to kind of imitate, you know, like a play the way, uh, with something that's linear, if you try to imitate music or choreography or a play that you've heard, if you try to really imitate that form, to use sound painting as a tool to, to achieve the same thing that you might achieve with notation, then you're shooting yourself in the foot. Um, that's not what the tool... Sure, you could use the sound painting language to achieve that. It takes a, a, a greater understanding of the language in order to be able to sort of compose in a way that you would, you know, if you wrote it down. But why do that? The tool, the sound painting language as a tool, yields new adventures. <laughs> it opens up new adventures for you as a composer. That's what's interesting about it. That's the reason that I kept doing it after 40 something, 42 years ago when I made up a few signs, why it was interesting to me afterwards to continue to develop the language to its hundreds and over a thousand sign. Why found signs? Why is it interesting? You know, it's interesting because you're composing in the mo in the moment. There was a phone. Excuse me for one second. All right, back from the phone call. <laughs> um, I, what I was saying was that just to go over it again for a second was to to use the sound painting language. Sound painting language as a tool to discover something new as a composer, for the tool itself to reveal things, concepts, structures, composition that might not be possible without a tool such as sound painting. As I was mentioning before, you know, imagine, you know, a scan. Uh, maybe I wasn't mentioning it before, but I will now. If you were scanning, you know, no, no, just the concept of scanning, right? You perform as the arm goes by. Imagine, okay, we're working with just an orchestra of musicians, and you're performing as the arm goes by and comes back by. And of course, you can do with two arms and different speeds, etc. So it can be quite complex, the results you're, you're, you're receiving. Um, try to notate that. You, as a traditional composer, one that writes it down, try to notate a scan, like a complex, fast, slow, you know, different tempo sort of scan. Try to notate that and then get a group to play that. First of all, get a conductor to conduct it. Uh, not the easiest thing in the world to do this way or with Sibelius or Finale, but it is quite accessible with a scanning arm, and it's that simple. So some things in sound painting are very accessible and some things are not as accessible as they are in more traditional composing and the same with traditional composing some things are not so accessible but they are with something like you know like a language like sound painting so anyway i would suggest trying not to re recreate what you already know but to use the language to take a new adventure um all right so the there's a lot of support out there for sound painting. You can go to soundpainting.com. I've recently posted all the workbook DVDs 
They're available for everybody to see. So you can go there and study the gestures. Um, the lessons, as you know, they're, on, they're available to watch. There is Sound Painting Geeks. That's a, that's a group on Facebook. You can write me at info at soundpainting.com. Sound painting, one word, info at soundpainting.com, and ask to ask to join Sound Painting Geeks. It's a really wonderful forum for discovering who's doing what with sound painting and seeing videos of sound painting with children and sound painting with string groups. Ah, lots of stuff to look at. Um, let me look at my notes here. There's a lot of workshops that go on around Europe in the States, some different parts of the Americas, etc. Um, if you're interested in, in learning about finding a workshop, well, the best thing to do again is to look on soundpainting.com for the, for the schedule. Uh, it's my schedule on there. Or contact me and say, oh, you know, I live in Uzbekistan. Is it possible to have a, uh, to, to come to a sound painting workshop? Uh, in fact, it is. <laughs> Certain times of year, uh, uh, Francois Genot, he's there teaching sound painting. So anyway, you have questions, write. Um, and also just to state, there's sound painting workbooks that are available in two different forms. You can buy them as a hard copy. Workbook 1 and 2 addresses sound painting with musicians. And Workbook 3 ad addresses sound painting with actors and dancers. Um, so, and those are available at soundpainting.com, both in hard copy and also both in, uh, also in PDF as a, in a downloadable form. You just need to go to soundpainting.com and check that out. So, um, I will uh, look for you. Uh, soon I will, I will publish uh, uh, the next set of lessons. We'll be speaking about... Uh, uh, the level two language as it, as it deals with musicians and actors and dancers, but mainly with more of a focus right now on, on, on musicians, but still some focus on actors and dancers. And then also all of these lessons are going to be in uh, another, uh, two more languages. I will present these lessons in French and I will present these lessons one through five in Spanish. So you'll be able to see those, find those soon if you're French speaking and Spanish speaking uh, as your main language, as your mother tongue, uh, you can go to see uh, the lessons in, in French or Spanish. Um, so anyway, I uh, thank you for joining me for these lessons and do not hesitate to contact info at soundpainting.com with any questions. And don't forget to get in front of the mirror, practice the gestures, uh, look at lots of stuff on YouTube, Daily Motion, Vimeo. Um, try it. Try it. It's, it's a language. It's like learning to speak Swedish or to speak French or to speak Spanish or to speak Turkish, etc. That first day you have a few words and you can use them. But if you want to become fluent in the language, you have to practice it. And again, sound painting is very accessible. You can use, in just a short amount of time, you can bring that, if you're a music teacher, or especially speaking about music, you can bring that to your class after just studying a very short amount of time and try it with your class. So, like, like learning a foreign language, to. A spoken language, you have to practice, you have to try it, you have to try. So, see you for the next set of lessons. Uh, thanks.